Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be talking about products that you insisted that I try, and these are all hidden gems that nobody else really talks about. Products that you all think just deserve more hype and recognition. So if that sounds good to you, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so let's start with product number one. It says, hey Jen, I know you said in the past that you look for lip smoothing products and I have the perfect product I haven't heard you talk about unless I missed it. It's the Inky List Lip Plumper and I promise it doesn't sting or burn. It has peptides to smooth your lips over time, but aside from that, it's one of the silkiest feeling lip balms I've ever tried hands down. So this sounds like an absolutely incredible product. It says on the Sephora website that it has a 6% tripeptide complex that visibly increases your lip volume over time for plumper looking, more defined lips in two weeks. And I admittedly haven't tried a lot from the Inky List. I tried a few products when they first launched a couple of years ago, and I really haven't tried anything since then. Oh wow, it actually almost feels like a lip oil. It's really, really thin, it gives a nice amount of gloss to your lips. It definitely doesn't tingle or burn and it has no fragrance. This feels like something that would go perfectly under another lip product. You could layer it or just wear it during the day and it's not going to feel like too much sitting on your lips. You know, it just feels really good. Thank you so much for the suggestion. I'm definitely going to keep using it over time and see if it helps to kind of smooth things out. So I'll keep you guys updated. The next product says Maybelline Tattoo Studio Ink Pen. It replaced my Holy Grail KVD Tattoo liner. I love that one too. And bonus, you can use it for brows if you get the brown color. So I never even thought of that, but I've been using the NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen and it looks pretty much the same as this one. So if you look at this one up close, it has that brush tip liner, which I love so much better than a felt tip. And honestly, this color looks like it would be perfect for my brows. It's not too warm of a brown. It's a little bit more ashy and it basically feels exactly the same as the NYX Lift and Snatch. So I think that would be so cool to have kind of a two-in-one product. And like I said, I love the KVD tattoo liner. So I would love to find something to replace that that lasts just as long and that's as easy to use. So I'm gonna try to fill in my brows with this first and see how it goes. And then we'll use it as a liner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my brows. I did use a clear brow gel already. So my brows are kind of just in place where I want them. I feel like this is slightly darker than the NYX brow pen that I use, but it's not bad. I do really like the undertone of it. It's not a super warm brown and a lot of times brow pencils are, so. All right, I'm just gonna take a spoolie and just kind of run this through my brows a little and break this color up. But yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit darker than my NYX one, but it's pretty close. All right, so there's one brow versus the other. I think this actually is doing a really decent job. I'm just gonna do the other one and then we'll move on to eyes. Okay, so let's see how this performs as eyeliner. I sometimes do my eyeliner before my eyeshadow and it acts as a little bit of a guide, which is really helpful. So I'm not gonna do like a huge wing, but I'm just gonna wing it out a little bit at the outer corner. So far, I think it's applying really smoothly. It doesn't look patchy. I'm just gonna connect it to the inner corner. I'm just going really, really lightly against my lash line, trying not to make the line too thick. All right, so I think this actually did a really good job. It's so nice to find a liner that isn't super expensive. And it's also one that you can just easily walk into the drugstore and grab it if you need to. All right, I'm just gonna do the other eye quickly. All right, so, so far this is another big hit. I love the way that it applied and I also love that I could do my brows and my eyeliner with the same product, that's amazing. Next, moving on for eyeshadow, I got this comment which said a few months ago, Lisa J did a video on Jane Iredale and she used a cool toned rosy eyeshadow palette that looked incredible on her, so I bought it and where has this been all my life? I think the colors would look so perfect with your complexion and I know you love cool tones, so I really want to see you give it a try. So I did order the palette and I have to say when I got it home, I was a little bit disappointed because I felt like it wasn't quite as cool toned as I was thinking, especially because of this rosy shade here. It just looks very warm in the pan, almost coppery. But once I actually swatched the palette out, so I'll show you guys quickly just a close up look at the palette itself. It has six shades, three shimmers and three mattes. So it's very balanced. And once I saw the swatches, I was like, okay, this makes a lot more sense. I don't feel like that pink is as warm as it looks in the pan and it looks beautiful with the other colors. So that made me really, really excited to use this one. 
So starting out, I'm gonna use this shade right here, which is kind of like a rosy brown matte, and I'm picking it up on my BK Beauty 201 brush. So, so I'm just gonna start working that right into my crease. Oh wow, this is so silky. It just blends effortlessly. I'm not surprised because if you've tried her powder blushes, those are also just like the most blendable blush. And her powder foundation is amazing too. So I just feel like they have really good powder products. And I just really love the tone of this color too. It looked kind of rosy brown in the pan, but on my skin, it almost looks like a rosy gray. That is so pretty. And it's also such a soft, pretty color. I think you could definitely build it up if you wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it just like this because this just looks so pretty, so natural. Okay, then next I'm gonna deepen up the crease with this shade right here. It's kind of a plummy color. And for this one, I'm using the Sigma E27. So I'm just gonna focus this toward the outer corner. Oh, this one is really soft too. It actually comes off a little bit lighter than it looks in the pan. So these are very buildable shadows and I actually like that because sometimes I go in a little heavy with shadows and then I find myself having to just blend and blend. So I like to be able to go in in lighter layers and not get it so intense so quickly. But I mean, it's also not not pigmented. I feel like it's showing up really well. The shadows are just so soft and I'm really impressed at how they're blending out. I think if you're somebody like me who is not the best at blending, these just make it really easy and there's absolutely no patchiness. It's not clinging like to my skin weird. All right, next let's pick up the rosy shade right here and see how this one applies. I'm just gonna put this one on with my finger to get the most impact. It doesn't seem like a super sparkly or metallic shade. It has a bit more of a satiny finish, which is really pretty. Yeah, that just adds the prettiest sheen to the eyelid without being too much. So I know a lot of times I use more sparkly eyeshadows, but if you're looking for something that is a little bit more subtle, I think you'll really, really love this palette. The mattes are just so soft and I feel like the shimmers still add impact, but they're not in your face as a lot of other shimmer shades are. So I really like this a lot. To add a little bit of sparkle, I think I'm just gonna pick up this white shade right here. And this is on the Sigma E42 Firm Blender. So I'm just gonna put this right in the inner corner of the eye just to brighten things up. The shade had a little bit of crumbly texture to it, so I just sprayed my brush with a little bit of setting spray just to help it hold together. So yeah, I would say this is the one shade in the palette that is a little bit glittery. It does have a little bit of glitter fallout, which I'm not crazy about, so I'm just gonna clean that up with a makeup wipe. It's a good thing <laughs> I did my eyes first. All right, moving on to the next product. It says, Jen, I just found the most perfect mascara ever. You're totally gonna thank me. It's the New Clinique High Impact Hi-Fi Mascara, and it's giving my lashes falsy vibes with no smudging or flaking off, even through my sweaty workouts, LOL. Pretty please show it on your channel. So I did see this on the Sephora website, and it has like almost five star reviews. So I felt like it might be a good thing, but then at the same time, I remembered that I really haven't ever loved a Clinique mascara. I just feel like they're very natural looking and I like that false lash look. This person did mention that it gives the falsy vibes, so I'm really excited to try this out. I love the tube, it's so cool. It's like this bright metallic green and this claims to give 230% more volume with 96% of people seeing significant impact after one application and 94% say that their lashes stay stretched and lifted all day. So it sounds pretty promising. I really like the brush too. I love when wands are really tapered at the inner corner because it helps you get all of those like little baby lashes in the inner corner. So, all right, let's try this out. All right, so, so far it seems like it's gonna be really easy to build up. The formula feels slightly wet, but it's not so wet that it's clumping my lashes together. I just think it's enough that it'll just build on itself really easily. Okay, so wow, this really is giving that false lash look. My lashes look super full. I mean, look at it from one side to the other. It looks like it just gave me double the lashes. Like, wow, this is really incredible. This is honestly the first Clinique mascara I've tried that I actually 
really like the way it makes my lashes look. So I'm really hoping that it doesn't smudge or flake. It's not supposed to. So I have really high hopes for this one. I'll put a pinned comment down below and let you guys know how all of this wears throughout the day as well. All right, wow, so far so good with everything. You guys have such good taste. Next up, it says, I know you like the Lift and Luminate foundation from number seven, but I can't remember if you've tried the Restore and Renew version. My 55-year-old skin looks flawless when I use it. It doesn't settle into lines and wrinkles and doesn't cause polka dot pores. It feels very thin and light too. Most foundations are very aging, but this one is brilliant. So I have tried this one. I got it when it first came out. I think it was a couple of years ago. And I seem to remember comparing it to the Lift and Luminate, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I think I liked it. And if memory serves, this one was a little bit of a lighter weight texture, which I might actually like better now because over the last couple of years, I've started to kind of switch my heavier foundations for lighter ones. And this one, while it did have more coverage, I think than a skin tint, it didn't have as much coverage as the Lift and Luminate, which is more like a medium coverage. So I would say this one was probably like a light to medium. Let's see. Oh wow, it is very, very lightweight. It's almost like a serum texture. It's going on flawlessly. It doesn't even look like foundation at all. It almost looks like I'm just putting on a moisturizer with a little bit of tint in it. By the way, this shade is Cool Vanilla. And on a side note, I love that number seven does cool undertones. So many of the drugstore brands don't. Or if they do have cool undertones, they're like a weird peachy color and they're not pink. So I always love number seven's foundation range for me. I just feel like I can always find something that matches and this one is a pretty close match. And this foundation is also giving my skin a really glowy and dewy finish, but I think it looks really good. Let me just zoom you guys in so you can see closer. All right, so here's my skin close up. You can see the glow that it has, but I don't feel like it's enhancing texture or making my pores look more visible or anything like that. It just has a nice radiance to it. It doesn't completely cover the dark spots and freckling on my cheeks, but I think it just does a good job at evening out my skin tone overall and just giving my really dry, dull skin a little bit more life back. It just gives it that little bit of glow, which I really like. Moving on, the next one says, I found a really great bronzer that's not orange and it's so affordable too. It's the Revolution Mega Bronzer in the shade Cool. It's a huge compact that will last forever. It's the only one I've been using since I got it. So I did go out and buy this at Ulta. It's the cool shade like they suggested. There is a warm shade and then there's one that's deeper than that. So this does come in a really huge compact. I think it would last quite a while. And when I first saw this in the pan, I didn't think it was quite as cool as I was hoping it was going to be. It looked a little bit warmer, but once I swatched it, it actually swatched a little bit cooler than it looked in the pan. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I think with a bronzer, it can't be too cool. Like you don't want it to have that grayish undertone, like a contour, because then it's not a bronzer. Like the whole point of a bronzer is still to warm up your face a little, but I just don't like when they're too warm or too orange. So hopefully this one is going to be okay. I'm going to be applying it with the Profusion Round powder brush. I love this brush. It's huge and it's so soft. It reminds me of other powder brushes I have that are a lot more expensive. All right, so I'm just going to apply a little to my cheek area. Oh wow, that is really nice. I feel like it's a really thin powder. It's not something that's just gonna cake onto your skin. It feels like it's really finely milled and it just adds a little hint of color. You can obviously build it up or just leave it looking really natural. I really like that. Let me just do a little on my forehead. I mean, yeah, I think this is warming up my face really nicely without any type of weird orange cast. And it's also not grabbing to my skin. It doesn't look muddy. It's just a really nice thin and lightweight formula. So yeah, I actually really like this a lot. I think it looks good. Let's move on to blush. So this one says, no one ever talks about the Stila convertible color anymore, but girl, you need to try it because it's the OG cream blush. It really is. You can use it on your lips, but I don't recommend because it looks too dry. Cream blushes are so hot right now, but no one uses these anymore for some reason. I completely agree, myself included. I completely forgot about these. They were so popular years and years ago. I remember reading about them in fashion magazines and taking the train to New York City 
just to go to a Sephora because I didn't even have a Sephora near me at the time because I wanted to try this and other products that I kept seeing in like Cosmo and Glamour and Allure magazine and I couldn't get them near me and there was no internet to order from back then. So yeah, I'm completely dating myself right now. But anyway, this is the shade Lilium. I went out and bought it again. This is the shade that I bought all those years ago when I was like 19 or 20 years old and I remember loving it. So I figured... I would just go back to the OG color that I had and it is not disappointing me right now. This is such a beautiful shade. It's pink, but it almost has a little bit of peachiness to it. It's a warm pink. It's not a color that I actually have a lot of in my collection. I feel like most of my light pinks are very cool toned, but this color is way more unique. I actually really love this. And it also leaves a little bit of dewiness to your skin, which is so pretty. And it honestly is applying very seamlessly with a sponge. So I guess there's a reason why these have been around so long. They really are so pretty. I almost, this is making me want to go and just get more colors now. And I need another cream blush, like a hole in the head. <laughs> so I need to just stop and be happy with this one because this color is just gorgeous. All right, then moving on for lips, it says Clinique Pop Lipstick Plus Primer. It looks so smoothing on the lips and it doesn't settle into fine lines. So obviously that sounds amazing to me. I did pick up one in the shade Blush Pop and these are supposed to be a lipstick with a primer kind of built in to leave your lips feeling really moisturized and hydrated and it's supposed to just make them look really smooth and this color looks so beautiful. It looks like a your lips but better kind of a shade. So, all right. Let's go ahead and see how this applies. It has no fragrance, by the way, which I don't think anything Clinique has fragrance. And honestly, I think the whole brand of Clinique is just like one big hidden gem because nobody really ever talks about Clinique, but they have some really, really good products. And oh my gosh, this might be the creamiest lipstick I have ever ever tried. Like it is so smooth. I did apply it over the Inky List lip balm, but it just feels so comfortable. I feel like the older I get and the more lines I get in my lips, just about every lipstick formula that everybody else raves about, I put it on and I'm like, why doesn't it look smooth on me? I mean, part of it could be that I don't have lip filler and a lot of people that I watch do, and that can definitely make your lips look really smooth. So then lipstick just naturally looks smoother on them. But this actually does just look smooth all on its its own, which is incredible. It also feels really hydrating too, and it's not grabbing to dry skin on my lips. It just looks really, really good. I'm super impressed. All right, so let me just fix my hair. Let's just recap everything that I tried really quick. Um, first, Inky List lip balm, amazing. It feels so silky and smooth and definitely is something that I could see myself just reapplying throughout the day. I'm excited to see if it does actually plump or smooth my lips over time. Of course, the Clinique also looks so amazing. I'll just be sure to leave some info in a pinned comment about the lasting power of the lipstick. I'm not super hopeful that it's gonna be long lasting because it feels so emollient. It's almost like a balm. So I have a feeling it's gonna wear away pretty quickly, but I don't mind if it's gonna look this good. I'll just reapply. Apply it. Also speaking of Clinique, the mascara, really, really good right out of the gate. And most of the time I don't love a mascara the first time I try it. It usually has to dry out a little. So I can only see this one getting even better. And now I understand why it has five stars. Also the Stila blush. Wow, is this gorgeous. I completely forgot how much I love this. I think there are just too many other cream blushes coming out that are stealing my attention away, but this is such a beautiful formula and a gorgeous color. Color. I'm also pretty impressed with the Revolution bronzer as well for eight bucks. This is a huge compact and I felt like the color was a little bit warm, but not orangey warm. I think it just warmed up my complexion really nicely and it's a nice thin and weightless formula. Also the Jane Iredale eyeshadows, I felt like they were so nice. They felt very velvety going on and I think it's definitely the kind of eyeshadow if you don't like a lot of sparkle or glitter, you're really gonna like most of these shades with the exception of this white one because this one is a little bit glittery and I had some fallout. But with the other colors, I think you could just get a really pretty cool toned look either with the plummy and pink shades or also there's this beautiful silver and there's the black as well that you could probably sheer out in the outer corner or use it as a liner. So I think the formula of this just feels really nice. And finally, the number seven foundation. It is really dry and mature skin friendly. It doesn't have a ton of coverage. So if you're looking for that, then you're not gonna find it here. I would say this 
is just one step above like a tinted moisturizer or a skin tint. It has just a little bit more coverage than those, but it's definitely not medium. But I do love the radiant glow that it gave my skin. So again, I'll leave info down below on how this wears throughout the day. So anyway, guys, I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more like this one with you guys suggesting products to me, I'll go ahead and just put my playlist right up here and you can check those videos out next if you have some extra time. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.